Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to another segment of Chicago Lawyer Magazine's Inside Out, our regular monthly video feature that explores different aspects of the law from different points of view. I'm your host, Andy Shaw, President and CEO of the Better Government Association, and I'm joined, as usual, by David Sussler, Inside Counsel for National Material LP. He'll give us the inside view, and by Tina Martini, a partner at DLA Piper. She has the outside perspective, and I should say, by way of full disclosure, she is also a member of the Better Government Association board. And I think I said at the end of the last segment, this is the one that probably conjures up some scary memories for people. You know, my my oldest daughter is a lawyer and I watched the, the stress and the pain of applying to law school and then later taking a bar and all that stuff. So, you know, the legal profession has gone through some interesting years. I know at the BGA, um, lawyers were furloughed for a year, associates were unable to start right away, the economy was down and things really got complicated. So what would you say to a law school student today that's different from what you might have said five years ago, David? You had to start with me. <laughs> well, I can start with Tina if no, she wants to go first. Um, you know, it's tough. Um, th there's a couple things that, that come to mind. Um, one is they have to start networking and looking for a job really right away in law school, which means get out there and start meeting people, go to activities, go to talks, go to panels, uh, take advantage of opportunities to meet lawyers. You mean even more quickly even than more you quickly than anybody. You used to be, you didn't really think about that stuff. You thought about OCI, on-campus interviews, second year, and you started thinking about it right before second year, at least when I was in, in law school. And you just, you've got to start much earlier. The other thing that, that five years ago I never would have, uh, I don't think I ever would have recommended to a law student to seriously start thinking about is the, by the third year, if they don't have a job, which is a very real prospect today, mm -hmm. Think about hanging out your own shingle, at least for a couple of years when you graduate. It might, it might not, not only might it be your only opportunity for a job, it's a great way to get experience right away while you're still looking for an established law firm job. It sounds like you're suggesting that people need to lower expectations and work a little harder from the get-go. Lower expectations regarding their ability to get a law firm job secured before they graduate law school, yes. Yeah, they need to make sure that they yeah, take that into account when they're talking about the finances of their education. So student, a student comes to you today and college students mm -hmm. thinking about law school, same student five years ago, what would you be telling them today by way of advice or guidance that you might not have said or would have said differently five years ago? I would say that they have to really be sure that this is what they want to do. Um, and that they really need to be passionate about it, that it's more important than ever before that they do well academically, particularly if they really want to get the big law firm job out of school. They need to figure out a way to differentiate themselves. Um, I would say very early on, just as David mentioned, the networking aspect, that's something that will help differentiate them from others in terms of how good is your network, how well can you deploy your network to help you find that opportunity. It's also important, from a, almost like from a personal branding perspective, for people to be thinking about that very early on when they do the interviewing either on campus or through other opportunities that they create on their own, how are they going to differentiate and distinguish themselves from the, the many other folks that people will be interviewing? Yeah, and to just carry on on that same theme, you know, law schools I think for the last 25 plus years have kind of made the law students think you have to get a job in big law or you're a failure, which is not true. And, and law students need to understand, as well as college students thinking about it, Fewer than 5% of graduates are going to get a job at, a, at you know, the 250 largest law firms. Um, so I, I, I have always said, uh, make sure you really want to go to law school. Have a good reason to do it. I emphasize it even more strongly nowadays. If your reason for going to law school is, I want to get rich, look for something else. And also, I know my daughter took a couple of years after college before she went to law school. She actually wanted a real job to experience the real world, world first. Would you tell a college student today that there's any advantage one way or another, get the get, do something else first, then law school, or go right on to law school, or it depends on who you are, or does it matter? I think it really depends on a few things. I would say, you know, I'm one of those folks who not only went from right from college to law school, but I actually went through high school and college quick more quickly. 
Uh, I think these days you've got a number of law schools that are really looking to people to have that job experience. Northwestern Law School is a great example where I think at least 80 or 85 percent of their class has worked for at least a year beforehand and I think there are a couple of advantages for to it. First of all, um, to sort of segue from what I said a couple minutes ago, I think it's a great way for you to confirm that it's really what you want to do. Number two, it's a great way for you from an economic perspective to perhaps save some money and, and use it towards your education so that you don't have as many loans to pay back after you graduate. And, and as well as since the need to be polished and distinguish yourself and really hit the ground running when you graduate from law school is so important today, another reason to take some time off and get real world experience is you gain a certain poise and savvy and understanding of the business world that you just don't get when you're still growing up and going to school. Uh, another reason that I often recommended to take time off, now I went straight through also, um, and I often look back and say maybe I should have taken a year or two off, is for me and I think for a lot of people, school, uh, school, law school is a means to an end. I didn't, I didn't want to be there, so school was kind of a game. But when you take time off and you go back, you know you, you are back there for a particular reason, it's not just a game anymore. I think you get more out of it. You're more focused. You you just you get a better education, a better foundation, and you're you're better able to take off running. And again, uh, going back to my own experience with my daughter, who had at least one internship with a large law firm while she was at law school. I think she had an externship with a judge one summer. How has that climate changed? Do the law does, does your law firm does your practice offer the same sorts of summer opportunities? Um, as it did a few years ago? Are those leaner and meaner? What would you say? I would say that they're leaner and meaner. What's interesting about my firm is that although we're the biggest firm in the world, we do things, we have historically done things a bit differently with our summer program, where we've really tried to make sure that the number of folks we hire completely match up with what we project our needs to be in particular practice areas when these folks are scheduled to graduate. There's some other firms that actually don't run their programs that way, so they will sometimes hire uh, you know, a class of 100, for example, knowing that they only need 60 or 70, and only hiring the top performer, the top performing 60 or 70 people, and then the rest of the folks don't get offers for permanent employment. So using that as a context, we still hire folks, we still have a summer program, but our summer program isn't as big as it used to be. And frankly, a lot of it's a function of what the need is again, and we've noticed that there's just not as much of a need. And we're trying to be very strategic with the number of folks we hire to make sure that we maximize their chance of success um, when they graduate law school and join us. And what are the opportunities inside for these summer programs? Well, the in-house world, it, it's still difficult to get a job at an in-house law department right out of law school. There are some companies that do it, but it, but that's rare. And However, in-house summer internships for first year, between first year and second year of law school as well as between second and third year, those opportunities are increasing somewhat. Uh, you know, the ACC has a program for 1Ls. I know of, a, of an increasing number of companies in the Chicago area that have summer programs for 2Ls. They're often diversity-based programs, though not always. Uh, but I think the majority of those programs are conducted where the interns have no expectation of an offer of employment after law school. Okay, so the last question is probably the most fun and maybe the one that's hardest to answer, which is the thing we ask about anyone who goes through a long academic program. You come, you come out of it and you sometimes wonder, well, what was I doing there? So much of it's not relevant to what I end up doing in real life. So what's, what are the most important things or what's the most important thing that you carried out of law school that you use in your day-to-day -day practice other than a few Latin terms that obviously you have to know. And I found that I didn't know it until I spent some time in courtrooms, either one of you. I um, I would say that law school, and I compare it often to the engineering degree that I got in engineering school, law school teaches you how to think. So while you may learn a lot about cases that frankly on a day-to-day -day basis in practicing you don't really ever think about so much. Um, I would say law school taught me how to think and it really taught me stamina. I mean, a lot of practicing law, particularly when you have a busy practice, or when you're fortunate enough to have a busy practice and when you're in a large firm, 
it's about stamina and it's about realizing that there's a certain sort of rhythm and cadence to a practice and I think that law school really prepares you for that. Well that's so interesting because I would think that there's just so much to know about what what is and isn't legal mm -hmm. that you'd have to really, you're, that's the given isn't mm -hmm. it? So you're talking about the added on values of law school, things that you, the characteristics as opposed to the actual um, nuts and bolts of the law itself. You're figuring everybody gets that. Is that what yes, and, and, and you really, at the end of the day, you aren't really learning what's legal versus illegal in, in school. You're reading a lot of cases, which when you look at them as a continuum, leave you with sort of a, like a spectrum and a history of a particular area, but you're not really, other than civil procedure and, and, and evidence, you're not really sitting there studying rules per se so much, or bankruptcy. And you have to know where to find things, which is probably amazing. It's yeah. becoming very resourceful, yeah. yes. So, so a few things. Um, one, I'm talking about learning stamina, I just popped into my head that one of the things I guess I learned about myself is I'm a morning person and I do much better studying and working in the morning. So going back to what you said about learning how to think, that's what everybody always said about law school is you learn how to think like a lawyer and I realized over the years I don't really think I think any differently than I did before law school but I realized I, I grew up in a family full of lawyers so I think that I think the same way I always did and it's always kind of frustrated me that I didn't change the way I think. But I've noticed from, from being with Tina all these years, I think engineering school teaches you how to think in, in a very unique and structured and disciplined way that is extraordinarily useful as an attorney. Yes, I mean, it's, an, it's interesting because after my first year of law school, I was wondering a lot during my first year, why am I here? I made a mistake because all the reading going from an, a world where there's one right answer to no right answer, where it's black and white versus gray, I actually was thinking that I was very ill-prepared compared to my colleagues and co and classmates who were poli-sci or pre-law or criminal justice or what have you. But then as I got further along into my law school career and after having practiced for almost 20 years, I realized that the rigor of an engineering degree and the way in which I look at the world and the way I sort of I'm a very process-driven person. I kind of see things and I frame them a little bit differently than I think other people do. And I think that the law degree is kind of teaches you the same thing. It's almost like legal writing was like learning how to write a lab experiment. It's the way that you argue, it's, it's the way you present your theory, the way you support it, the way you conclude. So So I but I just want to throw in one substantive thing that, that I thought about. Now, it's interesting, thinking back on law school, I entered law school with the intention of being, becoming a plaintiff's personal injury lawyer. A lot of law school was oriented towards a more business practice. So, I, in law school, I found, and to that, in that regard, I found it a little bit frustrating and boring. But, of course, I switched gears 12 years into my career, and the one course I've realized over my 14 years in-house that probably more than anything has stuck with me and benefited me is bankruptcy. Bankruptcy touches everything. And I actually ended up taking two bankruptcy classes. Oh, well, you'll be all set for when you're bankrupt. Oh, uh, thank you. Never, right. never, thank you. <laughs> As always, thanks to our husband and wife team. I didn't acknowledge that in the, in the previous segment, so I hope our viewers will uh, not, not take me to task for that. <laughs> David Sussler, Tina Martini, thanks for this segment uh, on law school, which actually tracks very closely to a lot of things my own daughter said. And, and I think that's true of most professions. I think the rigor of any tough, disciplined uh, area is to get you to think better and so you make smart decisions and stamina is definitely part of all of these jobs. I mean, we all better have stamina or we're in trouble. Okay, so this has been another uh, video segment of Chicago Lawyer Magazine's Inside Out. We appreciate you watching. I'm your host, Andy Shaw. Join us next time and have a great day.